Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Socket Podcast. This episode, we bring back Patty Minglin. I'm not exactly sure how many times she's been on the show, so I'm going to stop counting, and we're just going to call her a Socket Regular. So welcome, Patty. Hi, thanks. I love being back here. I feel like Steve Martin on Saturday Night Live, like he always comes back as the host. He feels very good. Steve Martin is one of my favorite like celebrities. Um, I took my dad and my sister to Colorado. Well, my sister lives there. So my dad and I flew out there and met her. And we went to the Steve Martin and Martin Short uh, comedy routine that was at Red Rock, where you're literally ah. you're built into the Red Rock. Love and that. it was amazing. He, they were so funny. And it was just such a great night. It was such a great time with me and my dad and my sister. And, uh, and one of the mornings we were um, eating breakfast at the hotel. And my dad leaned over to me. He's like, Kathy, look to your left. And it was Steve Martin making a little fruit plate. I was like, oh my God, Steve Martin's here. So I did go up to him and I just very discreetly just said, hi, Mr. Martin. I'm, we're going to see your show tonight. We're really excited. Thanks for all you do. And he was like, oh, thanks so much. I hope you enjoy it. So that was my big Steve Martin story. But I love Wow. It. You know, it's a kind of that's excited. great. I love that. I love that you actually went up to him. I was nervous. It's, My heart was. I would, but he literally. Because you never know what to do. Like, no, you know, like you never because you don't. Like you don't right, especially when it's just like you see them. I must say, in their natural habitat, like you're at the zoo of celebrities. <laughs> but it's like when you see them, like having breakfast, or um, we saw one of the. I don't know. I don't know my pro football players, but it was somebody that was on the bears. This has been year, a few years ago. We were with the kids at Arlington racetrack okay. and we saw just like sitting two rows. We were like in one of those little boxes. It was like for father's day or something and like sitting two in front of us was this guy from the Chicago bears, but he was there with like his family, like his kids. Yeah. And my son's like, Oh my gosh, I want to go say something. I'm like, I don't know. Like he's, he's having like a dad's day. Like this was like a family day. He's not like a signing for, but right. Nate just like went over and like, yeah. just, and he did, I think what you did. I just want to say, Hey, I'm a big fan. I've been a Bears fan my whole life. And then he got a, He took his picture with him. Oh, that's so nice. I, I was like, asked for an autograph or like asked it like yeah. breakfast at a hotel before the day. Right. Oh, but I think, you know, I think there's a way to do that respectfully without being invasive and knowing like you're going to say two sentences and then you're leaving, you know? So right, right. I do. I love that he was gracious though, that he was very nice. He was very nice. And his show was very funny. So anyway, um, Patty is the owner of Go Girl Communications. Uh, her team is amazing and helps me with the Branch Moms community and that all that we do. And we're actually um, hiring them to do more work for us to take a look at Socket, take a look at my practice, Advanced Health of Naperville, kind of audit our social media. So they, they do a little combination of content creation, social media, some websites, um, just getting everyone and all their clients on the right track because there is a lot to make. <laughs> there is a lot to mention. And there's more every day. Yeah. Like it seems like every day there's something new that pops on. It's like it's we love it. like I've got this. I've got this nailed. And then you wake up the next day and you're like, no, you don't, because there's seven <laughs> other things that you need to know right now. That's why you should hire someone to help you manage it, which I am so right. thankful to you and, uh, and Courtney. So thank you. You are welcome. We love working with you. Oh, thanks. Um, so I tapped. Patty on the shoulder to speak at our first back um, oh, yes. networking event for the branch. Um, we've been doing uh, networking luncheons for local moms in business for, oh my goodness, 11 years now. And oftentimes we have, you know, 60 to 80 moms that show up to, to network, make relationships. And we always have a great speaker and we eat delicious pizza at Aurelio's in Naperville, super yummy. And they have great gluten-free pizza, don't oh, they? Oh, they have the best, for just a little shout out to Aurelio's, they have great gluten-free pizza. It, it's so good. Like I'm not necessarily gluten-free, but I actually oh. prefer their gluten-free pizza. You, we did. We had pizza there night. just last night that had yeah. nothing to do with the networking. Lunch. <laughs> but you did. You said you preferred ordering because I said you don't have to do gluten-free just for me. And you were like, no, I actually like their gluten-free yeah. better. Yeah, it's, it's really, good. It's really good. So way to go, Aurelius. Yes. Um, so anyway, when we were talking about what what Patty was going to talk about, um, 
we had not had a networking luncheon or an in live in person event since January of 2020. And then obviously Gosh. everyone on the planet knows exactly what happened um, with a pandemic. So we decided that she was going to discuss what are the lessons learned from the pandemic that we should or hopefully will move forward with as we kind of come into this new way way of living, right? I don't even know if it's it, I don't know that it's ever going back a hundred percent to where it was. Yeah. And it's it's just like this this new version of of humanity, a new version of how we're moving forward and moving out of this kind of crisis situation. And I love what she had to say. And I was I was like marking down notes of how it affected me. So I thought I'd have her come on the podcast to to discuss. I think she had five main uh, lessons that she had learned that she's trying to implement. Um, I'm sure you do them perfectly, don't you, Patty? Yeah, um, right. Trying is the key word of that sentence you just said. Trying. But I think that like the statement you just made about it's not going to ever go back to exactly what it was before is true. And we're not the same people. Like, no. I think that that is something we have to give ourselves all a little grace about. We are not the same people that we were back in January of 2020. Like this is really, I just ran into a friend of mine this morning when I was walking the dog and we were having a conversation about, you know, it, all the kind of weird parenting things that popped up because who knew we would have to parent through a pandemic, right? Like we weren't prepared for that. There was no guidebook to say, oh, in case a pandemic happens, here's how you will, you need to handle it. So we had to figure it out. Yeah, we certainly, did. I remember with my kids, you know, there was a time where of course we're on lockdown and some parents were very flexible with that lockdown and some parents were not. And in the beginning, I was not, we didn't, I closed my practice. We were at home and, um, you know, my boys were, Christopher kind of went with the flow. Nick was not super happy with me. And it was a hard parenting time. It, I just had to sit down with him and say, I understand that this is not what you want. I don't want this either. Um, but I've like closed my business due to this. Like, this is a serious thing. He was also sick. I'm pretty sure he had COVID. I think he coughed for about three months. So mm -hmm. Um, I was like, you're, you're, not, I understand that you haven't been sick for a long time, but you have this lingering cough and it's not good. And you can't just go to Walgreens and go pick up a snack. You can't go see your girlfriend. And it was a hard, it was, it was one of the hardest things I had to do because it would have been easier to just be like, all right, I'll allow you to see your girlfriend, but that's it. Right. Right. And I know right. a lot of people that did that and it, there's, there's mental health issues and there's all these other things that go into the decisions that each parent had to make, but because not every parent was as strict as I was in that begin little beginning phase, it made it a lot harder, you know? Oh yeah. Well, I think that's part of what made it hard for everyone was everybody kind of was at different levels of comfort. Yeah. And I think that's what we're seeing now that we're opening back up. We're still, everyone's still at different levels of comfort and we have to be aware of that. For sure. I mean, we went to a networking event, two networking events together last night. This has been the week of networking, you know? It has been. And I have to remember my comfort level at this point is pretty high. I feel pretty comfortable. Um, I work, you know, as a chiropractor, I work directly close with patients and I've been doing that almost through the entire and this entire time. So I feel relatively comfortable, but I have to remember that even if you show up at a networking event and you're not wearing a mask, you may not be ready for the hug that we would have given each other in January. Right. And so I had to try to figure out, okay, well, like, how are we doing? What are we doing? What are you doing? What am I doing? It's, it's yeah. a juggling act that you have to kind of manage. It is. It's very, it's, a, it's, it's kind of a strange, I just told you before we started recording that because we did go to two in networking events last night and <laughs> I'm not used to networking. Like yeah. I have forgotten how to like small talk and networking, you know, the, those little, and I like, I think I was agreeing to things I don't even want to do because I just got flustered. So I think I was just saying yes to things and I didn't know where my business cards were. Like I just was completely out of, um, I was out of rhythm. Of of something that came very, very natural to me <laughs> pre-pandemic. Like I wouldn't have even given it a second thought. And I was late because I didn't, I had a commute. I couldn't just put right. on my computer, yeah. right? It's, it's there are other cars <laughs> on the road. What the heck? 
Yeah. <laughs> right. Why is everybody on the road? Well, it's five o'clock yeah. on a Thursday. So why don't we jump into these five different things that you feel that you've learned that you want to kind of take steps forward and, and continue on with uh, the, 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 new, the new way of living that we're all kind of trying to uh, step into? Yes. Um, well, the first one was to keep your family close and your work flexible. Mm. Um, and I know we've spent a lot of time with our families. So maybe, again, I think I said this in the thing, maybe it's still too soon to say, spend more time with them. But I just think that the beauty of the pandemic, if there is a beauty in it, is that we got this kind of like a, a once in a lifetime opportunity to be with our kids and to connect with, for me, it was family that doesn't live by me. I haven't lived by my family for 23 years. Like it's been a long time. Yep. And suddenly my sisters and I now have every other week we meet for a book club. We've been doing it since the pandemic. We started it because of the pandemic. And one of us is like, why didn't we do this before? Like, <laughs> why did we, we haven't lived by each opportunity? Like it right. was available to us. for right. a while, you know. So why did we not do this before and feel like, you know, I felt like I feel now like we are even more connected and we stay in touch more now because We've figured out we're using technology and I want to keep using that technology to do that, to keep family close. And I want to have those un, those kind of spontaneous moments when you're like watching movies with the kids in the living room because there's nothing else to do. Like my teenage, I only have one teenager still living with us, the rest are all on their own, but you know, he would, he didn't have anywhere else to go yeah. if we didn't either. So we would like sit in the family room couch and watch movies and I just felt like I got to know him better and I think he got to know us better and I don't want to lose that. I want to make sure that I, I keep space on my calendar for those spontaneous moments to happen or that I utilize technology in, in ways to stay connected with people that don't live by me. Like wow. I can still, I should have been doing this all along. We have the technology and the tools. So let me now use this and, and enrich my life. And then the same part of that is that keeping your work flexible, which I always, I know when I say this, people are like, well, I can't, I got to go back to my office. I get it. Like not everybody can work from home. And quite frankly, not everybody wants to be working from home. Yeah. I think we all changed our definition of what it was like to work from home after we had to do it. Like, oh, I love it. By the way, I'm like, I love you it. are, you really, you like went all in yeah. on this work from home philosophy. Um, and but I think you were prepared for that before. Well, yeah, I mean, like I was you, building out this studio. Yes. I said, I you, literally, the day before the shut-in in Illinois, the construction on my studio was done the day before. Yeah. And then the designers that I had come help me, They their plans were to go like out shopping for all of my furniture and all the decor. They did it all through like Wayfair, Target, and it just got shipped to my house. And then we put it all together and, and decorated it. So we had to be, we had to be flexible with that. But I mean, so yeah, I was, I was already in gear to shift a lot of my work to home. So, right. Which um, I think, and, and so and you love that. Like, and I have always worked at my offices out of my house. So it wasn't, I didn't like all these people are talking about these big transitions. I'm like, it's not really me, although my spouse worked from home suddenly. Yeah. And my son was, you know, virtual learning. And I was like, wait a minute, you all are in my space. Like I eat, you know, I make myself a little salad for lunch at this time every day. I need you to not be in the kitchen. <laughs> Everybody get out. Um, so I, you know, everybody was adjusting, but I, what I love about the flexibility is that again, I learned how to kind of put boundaries around my work, you know, because when you do work from home, and I am super guilty of this. And if my husband were up here right now, he would say, I can't believe you're saying this, like you do this. <laughs> but I, I think that you have, you know, when you work from home, you get used to just working whenever. Like I can still work at eight o'clock at night. I can still work, like I can just keep working yeah. and not stop. And I think that you have to you know, give yourself some boundaries. So even if you have to go back to the office, every day say, I'm going to be done at five o'clock. And when I come home, I'm not going to open up my laptop. I'm not going to look at my phone. I'm going to have dinner with my family. And we are going to do a spontaneous movie night or 
whatever it is, you know, just, or I'm going to go in later. You know, I want to have mornings with my kids. Like I know somebody that that became like this little ritual Mm -hmm. that they had morning time together. So build that in, you know, figure out a way to make that happen and not just go back to a hundred percent in I'm working. I'm going to work all the time. If I miss dinner, I miss dinner. Like kind of keep that flexibility that we had, keep that as much as you can. I agree. I agree. Uh, all right. My <laughs> second one is, uh, I love this one, is the focus on mental health. I, I feel like we've been talking, mental health is, you know, the conversation's happening. It's getting better as we talk about how important mental health is. But even when we still talk about self-care, it always ended up in that um, kind of that indulgence category, you know, like, mm-hmm oh, you get to go to the spa or, oh, you get to read a whole book. <laughs> it's like, you are right. so indulgent. I'm too busy to do that. That's I'm too you know. busy. I, I'm not going to be, I don't have time for that. But we really did have time for that. And the thing that I think happened to us is that we had to do that. Right. Again, like I said earlier, there was no guidebook to the pandemic. There was no guidebook to say you had to do this. And I feel like collectively, we all kind of came together and figured out, okay, we've got to figure out how to get through this. So yeah. for me, you know, it was walking the dog every day or, you know, for some people it was journaling for some people, it was just, you know, taking a bubble bath or, you know, <coughs> giving themselves a manicure. So self-care is not an indulgence. It's a necessity. Yeah. And it is, we should have been doing that all along. I, if it's seeing a counselor, see a counselor like you, to get, you know, make sure you take care of yourself because, and, and gosh, this is said like a thousand times, you can't take care of others if you can't take care of you, yeah. but it's true. Take a nap. Uh, yes. I love naps. You do love a nap. You, and you're good about naps. Like that's, but that, you know, we shouldn't feel guilty about that. Aren't there studies that say, if you take like a 25 minute nap in the middle of the day, you're supposed to, that's like the best thing you can do. You're I think to be so. more productive. other places have like siestas, right? And yes, so like shut down in the middle of the day, right? I think so. I think and so. We, our country up. is one of the ones, and, and we do this in a lot of areas. We just are like, go, go, go. Like we don't, all those little tiny things that we should be doing, <clears> like taking care of ourselves and taking a nap, taking a break, like just walk around the block. Like if you are working back at the office, you know, take a walk around the block um, in the middle of the day, you know, you know, set your alarm. Like I've had to do that where I will set, if I know that I'm getting ready to be in a project that's going to be mentally heavy and I will drown in it, like I will just start working <laughs> on it and then I'll be like, oh my gosh, it's five o'clock. Um, I will set an alarm on my, well, I do it through my, I'll, I'll whisper it, my Alexa, because I don't want her to start talking to me, but um I'll set an alarm for like in an hour and a half, make this alarm go off. So then I at least get up and walk. Yeah. That sounds crazy. That makes me sound like a crazy person. No, but you do. I mean, man, I've gotten to the point now where let's say it's, ele- we were, we were going to start taping at, you know, 12 o'clock. I set an alarm for myself at 10 till, and that was at 1130 because sometimes I can just dive in. Yes. So those alarms to alert you, like you need to be on a meeting soon. Cause every once in a while I'm like, oh my God, it's 1159. I have to like get downstairs, you know? Right. But, but those alarms also to take a break. I mean, I talk about this, this <coughs> excuse me. I have this little tickle in my throat. Um, I talk about this at the practice too. You can't sit for eight hours a day. You need to right. You do. And I, again, I think, well, and then I think it's my fear of us going back after this pandemic. Like there's this part of us that feels like we wasted a whole year. Right. Like we lost a year and a half. And so I, you know, I think our, what we want to do, like our bodies just want to be like, okay, I'm going to jump in a full force. Like I should be working all this, these days. I should, I should not be taking time to walk the dog in the morning or reading a book just for fun. Like I need to focus now. Now I've got to focus on the tasks at hand because I had a whole year where I didn't do that. But we should do that. We, we survived that year. Like we were able to do it. And I know that there were great losses, great losses. Oh my gosh, that was like magic. Like you had like, it was like a I little know, TV like, show. 
I, I sent wow. the text. I said, can you bring me a glass of water? I'm now crying. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness gracious. Yes, that's so great. Yeah, like, my family would let me be my water here. down. And I always have just a little sip of water, right? It's like, but all of a sudden he, he just opened up the door and like his arm just came into my studio. It so was cheers, magical. Cheers to Jason. Cheers. Yeah. Cheers. My water's almost gone. So maybe I should, because nobody's going to be bringing me water. I can guarantee you. <laughs> Oh my goodness. I can next all day long. I would have better luck of Jason driving over to my house to give me water than anyone that's in this house right now. That is a hundred percent true. Because <sighs> <We'll be tickled. laughs> he would he be like, I just I gotcha. That's right. I know. Like again, he would be way more reliable at getting me water than the people here. But I do I do think that that whole focus on mental health, and I know that um you know, a there was a lot of loss that we had mm -hmm. this year, whether it was personal, physical loss of people or loss of businesses and jobs. Like there has been a lot of loss. We're still recovering from this loss. Yeah. Like we still have to let our bodies and emotionally and physically come out of that. And so yeah. being, staying focused to what feels right for you and it's gonna be different for everyone, but That's pay so attention true. to and your body especially like kids, like some of the uh, younger kids, I think are just like, oh, cool. We're home. We're doing, you know, school with mom, even if mom is, you know, stressing out big time, but then you get that middle age and high school kid time, man, I just, I know from people that run like counseling centers and even tutoring centers, yeah. they're like, especially the boys, boys, like, like middle school going into high school, like that has been a really tough thing. Not that, a, not that a girl isn't struggling too, but from their perspectives, there's a certain age range that this has been really tough on. Um, and I just, I just feel, you know, no one asked to, to be in the middle of this. No. So, um, and I know, I probably know 20 therapists or counselors, they're slammed. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. I do too. And it's, and you're right. And it's all across the board. There was, um, I was listening to a podcast with Barack Obama. Uh -huh. This was at the, it was like, not the beginning of the pandemic, but we were in it and we were still really in it. Like there wasn't any end in sight. Yeah. And he was saying that the age group between like 15 and 19, he felt they were hit heavy with this just because those are the years when you're trying to discover who you are. Yeah. You know, you're I'm trying to kind of parents. pull away from your parents and you have your own friends, you know, your parents aren't making play dates anymore. Like you're branching out doing your own thing. And so here's this, and that's like an important, all of us did that when we were teenagers. And that's like this important period of time for just developing into the adults we become. And to think about these kids who for a year and a half didn't have that like what they were, it was almost like they were fighting against like this, their natural instinct was to break away, but they had to stay. Oh, like yeah, when you think here, of, right. Yes. And just when you think about that from a, just an emotional health kind of perspective, like that's going to take a little bit of time to get over it. And so I just hope we keep the focus on mental health. We keep paying attention to what our bodies are saying. Um, you know, I am a fan of professional counseling. I think it has done wonders for me personally, has done wonders for my relationships. Like I just feel like there's no shame in that game. Like yeah, they, not at they all. are professionals. They can really help you dig deep and figure some stuff out. And I just, I can't enough about that. Agreed. My little, little <laughs> cheer to the professional counselors who are working extremely hard right now. Like you said, they're slammed. They're slammed. Yep, I, I agree. So I, I, I agree that that should always be at our forefront. If you don't yes. have mental health or you are sliding down into kind of a funk slash depression, I mean, your whole life is affected. So, so I agree. The help that you need when you need it is super important. Yeah, I agree. Um, number three, embrace adaptability. Ah. We did this so well. I mean, look what we did. Like, I just, I was always amazed at what people were creating. You know, how, again, like we had doctor's appointments online and nope. you can just, like, we did a wedding. We Zoomed at my daughter's wedding. Like, we would never known how to do that. Um, remember those birth, like people would have birthday parties 
in their community like people drive by like a big parade for your son's birthday party like how cool is that like we just got super innovative and creative because we had to well you know if you had a a boy turning seven you weren't not going to do a birthday party for him so you had to figure out well how can we do this in a way that still seems special and wonderful hmm let's do a parade like that just felt so good and so I feel like as human beings the being able to think outside the box just keeps us all so fresh and keeps our minds sharp but it also just creates solutions to problems we thought we couldn't do like there's so many things we think that's impossible really it could be possible like we figured stuff out we figured out how to make it possible. So I don't want us to go back into lockdown. I don't want us to go back into a pandemic lockdown, but I think that we need to continue to be adaptable. We need to continue to look for change. And even if that is changing your route to work every once in a while, just to get the scenery different, or you know, just redoing, a lot of people started to redo stuff with their businesses. They started to look at their businesses differently. Like this is a great thing to do to just keep your mind sharp because when your mind is used to changing and having to adapt, you will find solutions everywhere. Like yeah. you will suddenly be sitting there and thinking, how could I do this? And how could I do it more effectively? And always remember you did do this. You have, you figured it out. I mean, I, I still don't know because again, my son is, was a senior in high school when this was happening. Well, he started, I guess he was a junior when it all started really. And the people with little kids at home who were virtual learning with kindergartners and second graders, like if you would have told them a year earlier that they would have had to figure this out, they'd be like, there's no way we can't do this. There's no way. And that they did it and they did it beautifully. I mean, it was hard, but my gosh, there were some really amazing things happening with what parents were and then the ones that had the full-time jobs on top of having to virtual learn, like it was, I, I think that there's something to be said about how sharp our minds are if we keep ourselves thinking instead of like, oh, this is too hard. I can't do this. You know, I think there's, it's so easy to say, well, I couldn't get through that or I, I, I there's no way I could handle that. We can handle a lot. And yes. do we want to handle some of these tough things? Of course not, right? I think there was a part of Jesse Isler's books, one of the books that I that I um, that I read. That they talked about when you believe your body's done. They were talking about physical activity. Oh yes, your body's done. You're only forty percent of what your body actually can do, right? And and I remember that. I think that's true for how much we can handle. Now, it doesn't mean that we want to be in that fight or flight stress reaction all the time. Right. The fact is, is that you can take on and you can handle more than you think you can for a short period of time. And I also like the adaptability part because in life, there's always things that are going to change. There's always, and if you get stuck in this rut of it has to be the same way, it has to be the same way. If you can't think on your feet and be like, oh, well, that's shifted. I need to, how do I make this better? Does this even evaluating, does this still work for me? You know, I I saw a lot of, I think we talked a little bit about this at the luncheon. I see lots of moms that have a couple of kids that they were all in like three or four activities each. And the family just lived in a minivan, some, you know, some of the family Mm -hmm. and they ate fast food a lot and they didn't feel healthy and they just felt stressed all the time, right? If you keep your body in this, I got to hear, I got to, you're keeping your body in this flight or flight um, situation where your sympathetic nervous system is just going haywire and right. it's not healthy for us emotionally. It's not healthy physically. And we got a, a pause button put on all of us. And for some of those same moms, now that I see them again, they're like, I'm never going back. Some of them snapped right back into it. They're like, all right, let's get going. Three, you know, yeah, three activities each for my three or four kids. But a lot of them, I think, were had the opportunity to see, huh, wow, okay, that was a lot less stressful. There were other stresses involved in it, but you know, maybe we should adapt to something different. Maybe two activities is okay, or one activity. Yeah. Um, let's uh, throw well, all caution to the wind and have a whole season where nothing happens, you know? And Well, because you're right. We got that pause button to see 
like you just made that comment about, does this still work for me? Yeah. Like there is no reason why we can't in our lives all the time, ask ourselves, you know, like kind of do a check-in, you know, this yeah. goes back to the mental health, do a check-in with yourself. And it could be, does this still work for me with that packed schedule of kids in five different programs or a work situation? Or if you're a business owner, is how you run your business or how you are marketing your business or your audience, does it still work for you? Yeah. And I, and that I've done this it with- It doesn't. We have learned to change. Yeah. Sorry, you broke up a little bit. Oh. But I, I agree because I've done that in my business too. I've never looked at my business, the practice in the way I am now. I'm analyzing numbers and um, it, it's, it's interesting to me, the things I'm learning about it that after 22 years, I never knew. And yeah. that some of that came out of this time, you know, and, right. it, and that's a good change. That's something I'll continue. That is something that was um, this book that I was reading. This book that I was reading at the beginning of the pandemic called Built to Last, it's an old book, but it's still really good. So if you have a business, I highly recommend you read it um, or listen to it on audio because that's what I did. Um, but he, they, they talk about that. Like it's when you look at, because they actually analyze like these big successful brands, like, you know, big companies that have done well throughout the ages. So these aren't, and they kind of came up with, these are the similar, these are like the five things or whatever, how many things they all have in common. Yep. They all do completely different kinds of work, but these are the things. And one of them was that ability to adapt to changes. Like to say that we can't keep creating the widget A, like widget A was awesome when we started. That was where we, everybody needed that. But then the world changed and our, our audience's lives changed. And widget A wasn't doing what people needed things to be done. It wasn't solving this problem. Yep. We're still solving this problem, but we had to create something different. And it's okay we did because we were adapting to the change in the market. We were adapting to the change in our environments. And I don't know why, I, I see this a lot because we work a lot with businesses and there is this sense of, oh, well, we've always been, we can't change from this. We've always offered this. We have to keep offering this, but it's not working, or we've been doing the same marketing plan for five years yeah. and we feel like it's not working. This is my favorite when they'll be you know, like, I feel like this isn't working anymore. And so then you want to meet and you're like, okay, let's t take it apart. Let's right. look. And then like, but I don't want to stop doing that. Okay. Well, that didn't work. Like we're, just, we're looking at it and you send out this email and nobody is reading it. So right. let's do something different. So you have to be willing to like, like you said, analyze and look at numbers and then look at it and say, okay, if this isn't working, then let's try something different. Yeah. Yep. You're not, a, somebody said once, you're not a tree. Yeah. Like you don't have to stay in your place. Like you're not planted in one spot. Right. You can do anything mm -hmm. you want. And I think that we learned that through the pandemic that actually, yeah, we could have less on our calendars. We could maybe get by with more uh, virtual meetings instead of using, you know, always trying to run out and see people. I love seeing people face to face now, but you don't have to do that all the time. Yeah. It's okay. Yep. Uh, I like, you know, every once in a while, I'll look at someone and be, we'll be like, do you want to meet in person or, and one or the other might say, you know what? I have a crazy day. Can we do a zoom, which I never would have done. And now you're saying right. that travel time. Um, for, in many ways, I'm, you know, saving, like get fully getting ready. Right. Uh, like ah, yeah. my hair looks fine from last night. It's fine. You know, um, <laughs> I don't have to, I can still wear my running pants. Right. Exactly. Or my, I'm not going to say that's what I'm wearing right now, but I <laughs> might have them on, but it's true. And I hope that we keep that. Like, I feel like that's good for all of us to be able to, again, I kind of go the statement you said about, is this still working for me? Yeah. Like just check in with yourself. And if it's not, then what can you change? Then you can change it. To make it work for you. Because you, you have it should power. work for you. Yeah. You yeah, you can power. do it. You can do it. Do do it. it. <laughs> okay, my fourth one is more gratitude. I mean, I and, and you're a big fan of gratitude. I like am. practicing gratitude daily is I, I don't care what mood you're in. If you're having a bad day, if like everything has gone wrong, um, you're sad, you're angry, whatever those negative emotions are that you're holding, if you can just turn everything back to being thankful for something in the moment. And 
uh, the beginning, like I, when I think back to the beginning of the pandemic, we didn't know. Like, no. I'm amazed. I think we did something on your website where we went back to a blog post that we had written. Like we were, we quoted somebody in the post and their URL had changed. Like they had a new website. So they had reached out and said, could you change the original URL to go to our new site, which is great. And I went back to that blog post to change it. And then I started reading it and I thought, oh my gosh, we had no idea. Like we had no idea. It was like, we were going to be six weeks. It's going to be. It was like, yeah, we were going to be, okay, I know the next three weeks are going to be hard. Here's some creative things you can do. And it's like, oh my gosh, we did not know that it was going to be all this time and how much our lives were going to be changed. Yeah. And so I just feel like the one thing, I just remember feeling there was that point probably about four weeks in when we kind of started realizing, oh shoot, this is, this is kind of in for the long haul. And it looks, it, and this is when you know, the death rates were just skyrocketing and all this, you, and the news started becoming so overwhelming. And then we hit summer and you had the George Floyd in, uh, incident. And so then it was like this suddenly, oh, the world was so heavy. Like yeah. I just felt so heavy. And then you would see these tiny little stories pop up, you know, about people in New York all standing outside their apartments, clapping for the shift change of in hospitals. And just, I, you would hear things that neighbors were doing for neighbors. Um, I always talk about like on your, the branch Facebook page, there would be moms that would say, hey, my child grew out of these diapers. I have a case and a half left. Yep. I will leave them on my porch. You don't like, and I've, I've already, you know, cleaned them up. Like I've already put all the, you know, the Clorox wipes all over them and everything. And I thought, ah. Oh, these people, like, look at this, like when the world seems dark and we're searching for light, we were the light. Like we were the ones oh. that were, you know, thinking of others and really wanting to help out and being so thankful. I mean, I can think of people that did things for me that just were so thoughtful. And it's like, gosh, that is so... And so it just took that whole idea I always have of, of trying to focus on what I'm thankful for to a whole new level. Nope. It was all I could do to, on some of those really heavy, heavy days when the world seemed to be falling apart. Um, and I just would think of, it, it's like, I think I quoted this in the thing, but I totally screwed up the quote. It's the Mr. Rogers quote. I, it's beautiful, but I'm going to screw it up again um, <laughs> about and, you know, when things are bad, when you see bad things happening, look for the helpers. Yeah. Because and I just are good. A lot of people uh, are good. Some people, yes. I mean, like hard, they suck hard. And now we're going to give you a list of the people we have. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, so many wonderful, caring, yes. thoughtful, giving people all over the place. And you're right. If you look for them, you'll see it even more. Right. right. And that's if you do that. And that's why I always think like the practicing gratitude daily, because once you get in a habit of looking for the good, you see it automatically. Like yeah. there, you, you even in really, really horrible moments, you start to see really good things emerging because you're just used to it. I always I shared this at the thing, but I do this. I don't do it as much as I should do it every day, but I don't do it every day. But I used, I keep a thing called a challenge journal where at the end of the day, I write down three bad things that happened. And it could be work things that didn't go right or, you know, relationship things, whatever it is, write three of them down and then look at those situations in light of gratitude. Like, what did you learn or what happened because of that? You know, if it's a bad client situation, maybe you learned how better to work with clients or, you were able to help them solve a problem because what you were doing wasn't working right. And so you came up with a new solution or whatever it is, just look for, look in the light of what you're thankful for. And if you are having such a bad day, you can't be thankful for anything. And I honestly have done this. Be thankful for the pen that you're writing with. Like if it has to get that granule, like if you have to just say, you know what, I'm thankful for this glass of water I have. Yeah. Then I'm start really there. Thankful for this glass of water that Jason Yeah. I always say I'm thankful for the pens I steal from your office. <laughs> I have like, like I go in. I have like I keep bringing one down to my socket studio, and then I realize I have like seven of them on my desk. I don't know why I need. They're seven. really good pens. I, again, I know I 
they're my family takes all of them. So, so I have to keep taking them when I come to your office, but, and, but you know, some days that's all we've got yeah. like those it's days. And if you are a, a mom with multiple children, all making you insane during the summer and things aren't going well, all you've got is the pen. Then just be <laughs> thankful for the pen that day because then tomorrow there'll be something more to it. You'll add to it, but get yourself in that practice of always being thankful because you're going to be, you're going to find the good in everywhere. I agree. I agree. All right. My last one. Last one. I have screwed up about 10 times since I said this out loud last Thursday. So a week, it's been a week and I am failing at number five. <laughs> you're trying. Stay in love with I'm trying. I am really trying. And I and I do note that I'm failing. So I am going to like re that's the thing. You can tomorrow's a new day. Yep. Start it over. Yep. Um my last one, and I think it's super important, and I actually learned this from you way before the pandemic, is say no. You stay in love with the word no. Keep your calendar. Don't say yes to everything. Keep your calendar open. Yeah. And I think, at least for me, I have, I'm super excited to be back in face-to-face -face events. You know, like I, I'm an extrovert. I like people. I get energy from people. And so I have just been, yes, I will go to that event. And yes, I will have coffee with you. And yes, I will do, like, I'm just like, yes, 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 yes. And I realized, like, I looked at my calendar for one week and it was like every evening I had something. Yeah. And that's too much. Wait, it's too much. And that's what I was doing before the pandemic. And I didn't realize that that was stressing me out until my calendar went from all these events to nothing. Yep. And then I was like, wait, this is kind of nice to not have to feel like I have to be somewhere or I not. But the truth is I don't have to be everywhere. Like I don't have to go to every networking event. I don't have to say yes to every lunch invitation. Like I don't have to if it's too much in that week. I can say, you know what? I'd love to have lunch with you, but next week's not good for me. What about the week after? Yep. Yeah, and I find if you can do that, if you can really take a good assessment of your calendar every week and know, all right, this is like next week for me is gonna be a busy week. Um, we just had a meeting with our, um, our corporate business coach, our business coach for the practice, and I'm gonna do a one-on-one -on -one with each of my 11 employees. And so I'm booking most of them out pretty quick. So I already know that I have a lot on my plate. So if someone else reaches out to me, um, I've been trying to leave Fridays uh, with no mm -hmm. meeting, try, try to do the best I can. I know that you're doing the same thing. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's okay to push it off. Every once in a while, there's going to be something you're like, hey, I, I've got to make this work next week. But for the most part, things can wait a week or two weeks right. or a month. You know, they can. And it goes back to your thing earlier about the mom with the kids and three different activities. Yep. Maybe you don't have to say yes to all those activities. You know, maybe this is a time like if you are looking at your calendar, like you said, living out of your minivan every day where you're eating fast food because that's the only way you're getting from point A to point B to point C. <laughs> to D you know, maybe, <laughs> right. Like maybe now is the time to be able to say, you know what? I'm going to say, now you can pick one activity. Each of you gets one activity and we're going to figure out how that works or whatever it is. But I just feel like we, and again, I did, I'm doing this. Like I am saying yes to everything because I just am so excited. But then I realize when I look and see, okay, I haven't been home yeah. one evening this week. That's a problem. Yep. Like I can't do that. And I'm going to burn myself out. I'm going to completely burn out my family. Like nobody wants to go back to that. <laughs> right. well maybe they do maybe they're like gosh thank goodness thank goodness she can go to these business things again because she's making us crazy right, get out but, of the do you have a networking event you need to go to yeah, right right can you create one can you just go somewhere like maybe you should create your own every week but I just I don't want us to rush back in I want us to remember what it was like those first few weeks when everything went off of our calendar yeah and that feeling that we had, like in the beginning, I was very nervous about that. When I saw calendars with nothing on it, I thought, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. But then it was like, oh, wait a second. So this is what it's like. Like, yes, oh. right. And, and I, there's nothing I can be doing. It was, it, I, I think, and I'm thinking of the words 
quickly to describe what I mean with this. I think we need to get to a place where we don't feel guilty for not booking ourselves out, even when we have the time available. I think we need to figure yes. out what balance is for us. And if we all, and I understand there's there's so much more to this pandemic than some of the things that we're talking about, right? So we Correct. I, you know, always let them like shout out like, hey, we know this was way worse for a lot of people than it was. For right. Um, but with that caveat said, it was a relief for me in some ways. Like, oh, I don't have anything to get up and run to. I I don't, I can live in my pajamas for a couple of days. And I think it's, it's, we can still create parts of our lives with intention where we don't have to be go, 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 go all the time. It's not healthy for us. Right. So No, it's not healthy for us. And if we did, and like all those other things we talked about, like the adaptability yeah. and gratitude and the self, the mental health. all of those things. Yes. <laughs> if we said no to more things and kept our calendars less booked, we could do all those other things. Yep. And those were the things that I think got us through the pandemic, but I think those are the things we kind of needed. Like it's, it's like we, we, and we maybe knew we needed it. We just didn't know how to get it. And I, I, I said this and last week and I'll say this again, we get to create, we get to redefine what normal is for us. We no longer have to step into something. And I said this specifically about work too. I think for so many years, especially as women, um, and if you, like I did come from corporate, I didn't, I haven't always been an entrepreneur, so an accidental, that's a whole other show. But I, when I worked, um, you know, for other people and I worked for other companies, I think I I was always trying to figure out how to get um, work, how to get my life to fit into my work. Like it was, okay, work is staying the way it is. I have to figure out, I have to change everything else to make it work, my life work inside of it. Now we get to say, look, this is what I want my life to be like. Now, how can I get work to fit into my life? Yep. What changes do I need to make? And we're, I mean, I don't think we will probably ever have this opportunity again. I hope we don't have another pandemic, <laughs> right. but I, I, I don't think we'll have this opportunity to say, I get to redefine what normal is for me. And my normal may be different than your normal and that's okay. Um, if we've learned anything, we've learned everybody is different and sure. functions in different ways. So this is it. This is our chance to say, this is what works for me and my family right now. When your kids get older, maybe things change. When you get a new job, maybe things change. And you just keep, again, check in with yourself what works for me right now, but define your normal and you get to do that. And that's, gosh, what a gift. Like if there's a gift at the end of all the sadness and heartbreak and hardness, that's the gift. Yep. I, I think again, as you tie up like all those five things, I think, I think that can all come together in just a couple of changes that we can take every day moving forward to have a healthier, happier, less stressful life. Yeah, because that's what we all want. I know, we do. At the end of the day, that's it. I mean, nobody wants to work harder (laughs) and be more miserable. Like nobody wants that. They just want to live that way. And I think if we just, again, you use the word intentional and I think that's perfect. If we're just more intentional about what we're doing, I think we're, we're good. Again, I'm failing at many of these right now but we're trying I am trying I really think I'm doing well on the gratitude well gratitude's awesome (laughs) right like I'm gonna start with that well and and if you start with that some of these other things will come along correct and just again being aware like being aware that you know what my calendar's looking a little full I gotta take some stuff out and I'm gonna be okay taking stuff out yep I agree well, thank you so much, Patty. Thanks for coming on and kind of- Thanks for having me. You know, the, the, the talk you gave for our networking luncheon. I just thought there were some, some real nuggets there where everyone has the chance, like you said, to create this new way of living for themselves with some of these lessons learned. And while these lessons may have been forced upon us, 
that's where opportunity comes comes from, right? And and adaptability and looking at things in a different way and saying, oh, well, uh, four, five of these things from this pandemic were horrible or really challenging for our family, but these five were magical. So why would we ever right. continue them? Why we should we should rise us up or you know raise us up and 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 keep living this way? That's I and I think that that is that is the key, like being able to look at those things that were really magical yeah. and good and allowed us to, to see people in a different way. Um, I think as hard as humanity has been lately, yeah. I think that we really have gotten the opportunity to see some really good in people. And you're just like, oh man, the world is filled with really great people. It is. It is. Um, Including you, Kathy Sever. Oh, oh, thank you, Patty Mangman. I appreciate you. <laughs> always, always love spending time with you, whether in person or on Zoom or on a podcast. So whatever, yes. wherever you need me, I'll, I'll show up. Love it. I will say yes. <laughs> <laughs> Unless your calendar is super full. Right. And then you will say, no, maybe we can do it next week. That's true. I will try, but I'll probably still say yes to you. So <laughs> anyway, um, if anyone wants to get a hold of you, how do they reach you? Yes. This way. Um, go to our website, gogirlcommunications.com. We are also on Instagram and Facebook. So you can find us there. Awesome. And if you're looking to get a hold of me, you can find us everywhere under Simply Socket, simplysocket.com and uh, Kathy at simplysocket.com for my email. All right, everyone, have a great day. And thanks again, Patty, for sharing your Thank wisdom you. about some of these things that we can take forward with us. Great. Thank you. Have a great day.